Thanks for coming. Super excited to be here at Data Council. So before we begin, just like a really quick show of hands. How many of you have you have heard of Hugging Face? Okay. okay, a lot of people. That's good. And how many of you have heard of Ray? Perfect. Okay. So unfortunately, it's going to be just me. Jules uh, couldn't make it in the end. Uh, but I am a software engineer at Anyscale, and I'm on the libraries team. So we deal with uh, the machine learning libraries built on top of uh, Ray. And all of my work is fully open source, uh, which I love. Uh, and I also contribute to other open source projects, such as PyCarrot. A little bit about Anyscale. So we are the original creators of Ray, which is a unified uh, framework for scalable computing. And uh, our mission is to make scalable compute for AI and ML in Python really easy and super straightforward to use. And we do it because scaling is a necessity, and scaling is hard but we want to make it as easy and simple as possible for everyone. So yeah, just a quick overview of the agenda. So we are going to go over the state of ML and AI as it is today. Uh, I will quickly recap uh, what hugging phase is for those who may not know it, but guessing by the show of hands, it's not going to be necessary. Uh, then I'm going to go over why distributed training uh, is simply a necessity today and uh, how you can combine Hugging Face transformers and uh, Ray AI runtime or Ray Air to make that super easy. And we'll conclude with a quick demo. So the state of the uh, ML and AI today, I mean, it's been all over the news lately, right? Generative AI is all the rage. Uh, we started out with image generating models such as Stable Diffusion, DALI. Uh, now OpenAI is, uh, has released ChatGPT, is going to release GPT-4. Uh, we are seeing more and more companies getting into the generative AI business, uh, such as uh, Anthropy, Cohere, uh, Databricks even. So basically, for natural language processing tasks and for text generations, the transformer architecture is the state of the art. It's the most widely used. It has given the best results so far. And we have seen some very impressive models come from that. Uh, but of course, there are other uses uh, for generative AI uh, than just generating text. So uh, we can have more specialized models for text classification, for uh, sentiment analysis, detecting toxicity, content moderation, entity recognition, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, of course, you may say, like, why do we need all those different models when we have ChatGPT? Uh, there are many different uh, use cases for that. So for example, you may want to have a model that you have full control over. Uh, or you may want to have a small model that uh, you can run cheaply, cheaper than it takes to make API calls to OpenAI. Or you want a model that is completely fine-tuned to your data set. So I'm just going to briefly skip over this. So Transformers is an architecture uh, for deep learning. And I guess like the, basically all you need is the attention is all you need paper. Uh, but the key thing for here from the practical perspective is that transformers tend to be very large models. And they need quite a bit of data uh, to give good results. And if a model is large, then that's going to mean it's not going to only require a lot of memory to fit the model in the first place, but it's also going to require a lot of compute to train the model in a, or train or serve the model in a reasonable time frame. Uh, so briefly, the, the Hugging Face Transformers library uh, is a library for Python developers that provides an opinionated high-level API uh, for uh, mainly natural language uh, tasks, but also uh, branching into computer vision and audio processing. And what it provides is multiple different model architectures, uh, as well as integration with the Hugging Face Hub, uh, which is uh, a community where you can share the models, you can share the data sets, you can easily obtain pre-trained models. Uh, and you can uh, very quickly uh, start running your own model. You can very quickly start fine-tuning it uh, or do whatever you want with it. Yeah. So Hugging Face Transformers makes uh, applying machine learning and AI easy by very 
uh, much simplifying the flow of the of putting an ML model into production. So basically, you can obtain a pre-trained model from Hugging Face Hub. It's like one line of code to get it. Then you can use the trainer abstraction in Hugging Face Transformers to fine-tune it on your data set. Uh, and then you can use the pipelines abstraction for inference. So basically, three steps, uh, and you are done. So we have abstracted the complexities of deep learning. We have increased our velocity. It's very easy to experiment uh, with the high-level API. And we have a plethora of uh, pre-trained models and data sets, uh, weights we can choose from. Uh, and we can all obtain all of those with just one line of code. So here's like an example of a typical Hugging Face Transformers workflow. We get the data set. We get the model from the hub. We set the training arguments. And we use the trainer abstraction. And all we have to do is call trainer to train. Right? So that's great. And of course, if you want, uh, then we can also like use Hugging Face Accelerate if you want a lower level API. But we are going to mainly focus on this. So the problem is that like, even though we have the API pretty much nailed down, uh, the problem is that the state-of-the-art models, uh, tr large transformers, they need a lot of compute to actually train. Uh, so if we look at like, the increases in model sizes and the computing power uh, that have been happening, uh, well, they, they are growing exponentially. And the problem is that uh, compute is just not being able to keep up. So uh, Moore law was stipulating that the um, computing power of CPUs is going to double every uh, 18 months. But we can see that uh, with uh, deep learning models, the number of uh, petaflops required is 35x every 18 months. And of course, we have hardware accelerators such as uh, GPUs or even more specialized accelerators such as TPUs. And uh, even though NVIDIA is doing some crazy stuff on the hardware level, like, there is always going to be this problem where uh, the models are always going to grow larger than what the hardware can provide. So in other words, uh, the problem is that we have a supply-demand problem. And the only way to, to quench that demand for compute is to move beyond a single machine uh, and start using multiple machines. So we have to go distributed. There's no way out. But if we go distributed, that introduces multiple new problems. So if we have one machine, developing is very easy. Uh, but if we go to multiple machines, uh, we start running into new problems. So first of all, our development velocity slows down because uh, we now operate on multiple machines. Uh, we have to make changes on multiple machines. Uh, we have to set them up. Uh, we have to start to manage complex infrastructure. So uh, now we suddenly have to become experts in how to use AWS uh, or GCP. And this is not something that uh, we want to do as machine learning engineers or data scientists. What we want to do is we want to focus on the model itself. We want to focus on the results we're getting and not necessarily like how to set up the infrastructure for it to run in the first place. And finally, even though we can get the training of the model to scale, uh, if we cannot get other parts of the machine learning pipeline to scale as well, so data ingest, uh, hyperparameter optimization, uh, and then inference, then we are just going to keep running into bottlenecks. And uh, the increases in speed we have gotten from scaling out our training are just going to basically get canceled out. So the solution that we have come up uh, with in uh, Ray is the Ray AI runtime which is uh, a scalable unified toolkit for both data scientists and software engineers. Uh, and uh, it allows us to provide a flexible Pythonic framework for each step of the ML workflow. So for data ingest, uh, we have Ray datasets. For data processing, we also have Ray datasets. Ray train for training, Ray, tian, uh, Ray tune for tuning. And then for inference and serving, we have uh, Ray serve. So just a little bit more about the Ray AI on runtime. So we can think of this whole ecosystem of uh, Ray AI runtime as sort of a layered cake, right? So at the very bottom, we have the actual cloud providers that provide the hardware uh, for programs to, to run. Uh, at, top, at the top of this, we have Ray Core, which is um, our like the base low-level library that provides simple primitives for creating uh, distributed applications. Uh, on top of that, we as the library team at Scale, but also like multiple open source contributors, everything we do is uh, open source here, 
Uh, we provide libraries that serve as like a middle ground between the low level uh, Ray core and uh, higher level libraries. So in Ray AI on runtime, we have several libraries and they in turn integrate with uh, best of breed tools that we are all familiar with. Uh, so for example, PyTorch, uh, Scikit-Learn, XGBoost, different hyperparameter tuning uh, libraries. We have integrations with ONDB, MLflow, uh, and so on and so on. So when do we want to use Ray Air? So there are several situations uh, we may want to consider that. So first of all, we have a single type of workload to scale. So let's say we are just doing hyperparameter optimization. We have a scikit-learn model. We want to try out multiple different hyperparameters and we want to do it at scale. We can use Raytune for that and we do not have to change anything else in our stack. We can create whole end-to-end -end machine learning applications and platform with it. Uh, so we can combine the different libraries we have in Ray Air uh, to create an entire pipeline. Uh, we can uh, run different ecosystem libraries using a unified API. So we provide integrations for uh, hugging phase, uh, but also XGBoost, Scikit-Learn, PyTorch, uh, and so on. And finally, this is something that we are also seeing uh, happen uh, is that uh, companies and users start building their own custom ML platforms using Ray Air. Uh, as the way to basically as the execution layer. Uh, so uh, Spotify, Shopify, Instacart, uh, they are all uh, building uh, platforms on top of Ray Air. And why would we want to use Ray Air? So first of all, it provides an efficient data layer and distributed object store. So those are the advantages of Ray. Uh, the optimizations that we have in Ray allow us to very efficiently share the data between different nodes in a cluster. Um, the API is completely Python-based, so you do not have to get out of your Python script to do uh, anything. Uh, basically, once you have uh, a Ray cluster, you can stay in the Python script at all times. Uh, the Ray core provides robust scheduling and resource management. Uh, and uh, if you build on top of Ray, then you basically have the entire compute strata abstracted away from you, and the challenges that we have outlined before are addressed. So now when we come to combining Hugging Face and Ray Air, uh, what we have done is we have provided an integration uh, for Hugging Face Transformers, uh, which we called Hugging Face Trainer. And if you want to use it, it's very simple. So first of all, we have our existing Hugging Face code that we want to scale up. Uh, all we need to do is we just need to put it in a function and return the trainer object. Then we define a scaling config. So this is a Ray Air API we have for determining how you want to assign resources to this job. Uh, and once you have a Ray cluster already set up, and if you are even taking like advantage of Ray Autoscaler, which can automatically provision nodes from your cloud provider, then basically if you want to increase the number of GPUs you are using. All you have to do is just change the number of workers. Then we define our Ray Air Hugging Face Trainer. Uh, we use uh, Ray data sets uh, as a way to ingest the data. Uh, I will talk about that later more. And all we have to do is we have to tra uh, call trainer.fit, so very familiar API. We have been inspired by scikit-learn. And this result object that we are getting is going to contain different results, such as metrics, checkpoints, and so on. So let me dive a little bit deeper into the implementation of the trainer itself. Uh, so under the hood, uh, what we have is we are using the PyTorch distributed backend, uh, which means in practice that we can run distributed data parallel uh, or FSDP training uh, on our cluster. And uh, because we are not like because we have taken a generic approach to it, we are only initializing the PyTorch distributed backend. That means you have multiple ways of distributing the model available. So uh, you can do data parallel training, you can do model parallel training, uh, and so on. We allow to use the user defined hugging face code without any changes. Uh, we automatically convert Ray datasets to the format expected by Hugging Face. So you can use Ray datasets for efficient data ingest and pre-processing. Uh, and Ray datasets allows you to also parallelize the pre-processing and uh, handle data that is too big to fit into memory of a single node. 
We also provide the building logging and monitoring, and this is not yet uh, available, but it will be in the next Ray release. We'll have a separate Accelerate trainer if you prefer the Accelerate API to the Transformers API. Uh, so what we basically do is we create several Ray actors, and you can think of an actor uh, as a stateful uh, process. And those actors all talk to each other using the Python distributed backend. Uh, so that means, for example, you can uh, also use DeepSpeed, which uh, takes advantage of the PyTorch distributed backend. And that allows us to basically abstract away the infrastructure because creating the processes, orchestrating the processes, uh, assigning resources, this is all taken care of by Ray. Uh, and we can uh, use both CPU and GPU workers, and we can even combine them. So for example, uh, you can have data pre-processing happen on CPU, and you can have training happen on GPU. So for data ingestion, as I mentioned before, we use Ray datasets as a common format, and uh, that allows us to easily read from both disk and cloud uh, or other formats. And this is fully distributed, which means that uh, it integrates seamlessly with uh, the rest of our pipeline, and it can handle data that is too big to fit uh, on one node or even the entire cluster by uh, using smart offloading to disk. Uh, and we also provide uh, several out-of-the-box preprocessors for common ML tasks, such as data imputation um, or, uh, and so on. And you can also write your own user-defined functions or UDFs uh, to do map apply with. Uh, and if you define them that way, so here in the example, we create a, a tokenize function, which uses a hugging face tokenizer, and then we use a Ray Air batch mapper. If you pass that batch mapper as a preprocessor into the hugging face trainer, then that's going to be associated with the checkpoint uh, obtained after the training. So uh, you're going to have a guarantee that the same preprocessing is going to be applied during both training and later inference. So for logging and monitoring, uh, we are reporting all of the metrics uh, that we get from Hugging Face. And we have a, a callback API that uh, you can use to integrate with your favorite tools. Uh, so we provide out of the box callbacks for TensorBoard, MLflow, Weights and Biases, Comet, uh, et cetera. And we have open source contributors contributing uh, more integrations. And you can, of course, use the API to, to write your own. Uh, and afterwards, the results object also contains some extra information um, that you can uh, uh, later use for uh, analysis of the training. We provide automatic checkpointing. So uh, just by setting uh, the syncing configuration, you have automatic checkpointing to cloud. Uh, you can then resume the training from that checkpoint. So we have a checkpoint abstraction. Uh, and uh, because we have this automatic checkpointing, we also have automatic resumption from checkpoint. And that, in turn, enables spot instance usage. So if a node goes down that we are, that we are using, either due to some sort of an issue or whether they're because it was preempted by the cloud provider, then we can automatically provision another node and we can resume the training from latest checkpoint. And also that checkpoint abstraction is used as a data container for later inference and serving. So here is the typical Hugging Face Transformers workload as I showed before. So now we are going to see how hard or how easy it is to distribute it with Ray Train. So first of all, all we have to do is put the logic that was initializing the model and the training arguments and the trainer object from Hugging Face Transformers into a function. Then we instantiate the Ray Air Hugging Face Trainer. So we take in the function that we have just created. We take in the scaling config. And we take the Ray data set. So we also have an API to turn a Hugging Face data set into a Ray data set. Uh, but you can, of course, uh, use different data sets uh, and different data sources. And Ray data sets can scale very well. So uh, we, have, uh, we have some users using them on a petabyte scale. Uh, and we just call trainer.fit, and we obtain the results object. And if we were to specify any extra callbacks, then we would also get information back from that. 
So just to summarize, uh, we use Ray datasets for ingest. Uh, we can use our existing hugging face code, and it integrates well with the rest of the Ray R. And one other cool thing about Ray is that the code you write uh, on your laptop uh, is also going to run just as well on uh, a cluster composed of multiple nodes. Basically, the, the fact that you are running something on multiple machines is getting abstracted. So the other integrations we have uh, with the rest of Ray Air, so we can do hyperparameter tuning with Ray Air. Uh, all we have to do is basically just pass our Hugging Face trainer into a tuner object, and that's going to run a distributed hyperparameter tuning run of our distributed training. So it's automatically going to take care of nested parallelism and resource allocation here. Uh, for inference and serving, we have uh, Ray Serve for online inference. Uh, and we also have uh, the Predictor API for offline inference. And we can use that checkpoint that you have obtained after the training uh, to instantiate both Serve and the batch predictor. And because we are using Hugging Face pipelines under the hood, we are going to get the same consistent output as from non-distributed Hugging Face transformers. Yeah, so this is an example of how you do, would do uh, uh, batch prediction. So we have a batch predictor API, we pass the checkpoint, we set the Hugging Face predictor, and then we just need to pass array data set and we can do prediction. So I have a quick demo. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to show it in its entirety. Uh, so let me just open it up. Uh, so basically what we are going to do here is we are going to take a GPTJ model uh, which, by the way, is also behind the Dolly model released by Databricks recently. Uh, and the GPTJ was trained on Ray. And this is also another bit of trivia. Chat GPT was also trained on Ray. Uh, so what we have here is we have a notebook. Uh, so all we have to do is we have to set the number of workers we want. Uh, we instantiate the runtime environment, uh, which ensures that we have the same uh, libraries on every node. We get the tiny Shakespeare data set. So the task we have, oh, I'm not sure if this is running. Uh, now that I look at it, well, I think the demo is going to have to stay in our hearts then. But not, not all is lost. The demo is available. Uh, so if you are interested, you can just quickly take a snapshot of that. Uh, and you can run it yourself. Uh, that being said, this particular demo, uh, because we are training a GPTJ model, we are doing that with deep speed uh, because um, it may not be able to fit on uh, GPUs with 16 gigabytes of uh, GPU memory, but it should be able to fit on a GPU with 24 gigabytes, so that would be A10. Uh, so that's, that's a bit of a bummer, but I mean, we are almost at time anyway. Uh, so yeah, uh, that was a quick overview of uh, how you can easily scale up uh, transformers fine-tuning uh, using Ray Air and how you can integrate it with uh, the rest of the ML pipeline. And a bit of a shameless plug here, we are going to have a, a Ray Summit where we are going to talk more about the different advances we have made in the Ray uh, Air ecosystem. And thank you so much for attending.